Hi, uh, today uh, we have a fairly uh, easy section just uh, to kind of mention some notions uh, in case you run into them uh, getting involved with graphs and they are matrix representation of matrix representation of graphs and isomorphism. So matrix are very important uh, machinery for linear algebra and, has, and they have many applications, many softwares uh, include calculations with matrices. So it is powerful thing for graphs if we can include uh, that machinery. And here is the way to connect uh, matrices uh, with graphs. So here is the way, I'll just give you example, and I'm not even write the definition because it's fairly simple. Let's say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, here is an arrow, here is an arrow, here is another arrow, and then there is an arrow from 2 to 4, and there is an arrow from 1 to 4. So generally, in the matrix, uh, so since we have four vertices, then we'll make a, a matrix representing this graph, and here is how we'll write it. It will be actually, it will be actually um, a matrix recording on i, j, and 3, number of arrows going from node i to node j. So one going into itself, none. Then one going into two, there is one arrow, so that will be one. One goes into three, none, so it will be zero. One going into four, one. So that's row one. And then row two, the same thing. Two sends on, sending to one, so two, one will be one. Because there is an arrow starting at two, ending. So if there is arrow going to i and j, that means entry in a, i, j. If there are more arrows, there could be two, three, four for multiple graphs. And then what? From 2, what do I also have? We don't have 2, 2, we don't have 2, 3, but we do have 2, 4. From 3, we only have 3, 2, which is here, and nothing else. And from 4, we have nothing, actually. There are all the zeros, because there are no sending, just receiving. So here it is. Generally, this matrix contains the same information as our hourglass and that's why it's a good way to store the way information about the graph. And then, uh, so, um, then what, uh, I will skip this theorem because it's not that important for us, but uh, um, we want uh, first uh, to review how to calculate the product of matrices. Maybe you saw that uh, in, uh, in some course, but just in case, if we have, for example, two by two matrices, two, I just gave you one example, how do we multiply matrices? Four, negative one, two, three. Generally, matrices, in order to be multiplied, uh, middle dimension has to be same, because this is two by two, two rows, two columns. This one's also two by two, two rows, two columns. This number has to be same. And generally what we do, we do the dot product of rows and columns. So we take this row times this column and place the result into 1, 1. But how we, we multiply first time first, which is 2 times 4 plus 3 times 2. So that would be 14. And we put it here. The same way now 2, 3 times negative 1, 3 will be here. So 2 times 4 plus 3 times negative 1, that would be 5. And then, uh, I got seven here in my calculation. Uh, no, two, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not quite wrong. Two times three, I already done first one. Now I'm not the second one, two times negative one, plus three times three, and that's really seven. And then, uh, in the second, we start the second row, and we do the same thing. Dot product of this and this, it's four times one, which is four. So that would be one times four plus zero times two, and that's four. And finally, second and second, so we go what? One times negative one plus zero times three, so you put it here, so it's negative one. That's how we multiply matrices. And by the way, there's also matrix 
uh, that is sometimes showing up in calculation. It's called identity matrix. That's the one that has ones on diagonal and zero, zero everywhere. Here is three by three matrix. Has the zeros on the other spots and the ones on diagonal. And then here's a nice theorem just to illustrate how matrix is, uh, how this connection between uh, matrices and graphs uh, could be fruitful. So it says let the G be a graph. Um, with vertices V1, V2 to Vn and A it's adjacency matrix this one is called adjacency matrix I forgot to tell adjacency matrix it's adjacency matrix Then, if A to the M is a matrix that looks like this, B, I, J, and I. So we multiply matrix A by itself, M times, like a power, and then we describe the entries as B, I, J. And then, B, I, J is equal to the number of walks G from V I to J. And why is that uh, proof? We'll do proof by induction. So um, proof on the induction on it. So if m equals 1, then uh, theorem is true y, we count then a to the m is just a, which is a i j, and according to uh, walks of length 1 are just edges. So just then a number of walks of length 1 is um, just a number of edges connecting I and J. This is a story about the graph that's symmetric, so in this story, uh, direction is always both ways when they are connected. All right, assume truth, um, assume for n equals k. Then what? Um, then then uh, and now uh, we want to prove for n equals k plus one. So number of walks. length m plus 1 from vi to vj actually has one of the vertexes vk immediately Before Vj, k goes between one and n. What did I say here? I say the following: If you go from v1 and you have a walk, and here is your Vj, then uh, uh, what do I have? So then the the vertex preceding Vj on that walk is certain. Uh, vertex vk 
and then what? Then here it is. All the work works from V1 to Vj could be classified over Vk. So generally, uh, we will calculate the following. In how many ways can you get? So walk, number of walks, V1 to Vj equals number of walks from V1 to Vk times the number of walks from Vk to Vj of length 1. These are of length m and these are of length 1. But for all possible k's, so generally we'll do the sum when k goes from And what will that give us? Number of walks from, uh, uh, let me erase here. Yeah, it's a better calculator board. So generally, I, I just continue the calculation. So number of walks, V1 to VI, oh, to VJ of the 10 plus 1, equals sum when k goes 1 to n, depends through which vk you want to go. And then by inducting the hypothesis, number of walks from v1 to vk is equal to the entry c uh, ik in the matrix a to the m. And number of walks of length 1 from vk to um, Vj is just entry number of edges A K J. But what is this? This is just product of matrices. So this is the entry, which is the uh, the ij entry. Because here's how product calls ij entry of the matrix. M times A, because this is the entry of A, and that's A to the M plus 1. So this is just like inductive proof, maybe a little more abstract, just uh, you will get a better feeling about it when you just do a couple of homework problems uh, where you really just multiply this and see how it works. All right, uh, this was the first part of, the, of, the, of this section. Second part of this section is about isomorphisms. Isomorphic in mathematics means, for our purposes, basically the same thing. In algebra, that means maybe just labels different. Algebraic operations work the same way. And then in linear algebra, again, spaces with all the properties the same. The same story with graph. So uh, here it is, definition. So here, here we talk about isomorphism. We generally think when our graphs are isomorphic that it's basically the same graph, just drawn differently. So let G and G prime be graphs. And G has vertexes G, edges of G, G prime, vertexes of G prime, edges of G prime. And then what? We say that uh, G and G prime are isomorphic if and only if there is a mapping f from g into g into from b to g sorry yeah. okay, from vertexes into vertexes one that's one to one and on two or what we call bijection so that means each uh, vertex of one graph has exactly one vertex from the other graph assigned and such that, uh, and also uh, if the edge, um, if the pair VW is associated with, with the edge E, that's in graph G, 
if and only if, then what? You, you also have that it maps edges into edges. Then uh, f of a v and f of w is associated with f of v. Uh, actually, uh, I should better give that special name because it's really not nice to use the same name for both maps. So F maps are the same vertices and G maps edges into edges. So then uh, if two vertices are associated in one graph and then uh, their images are associated uh, with corresponding edges in the other graph. So here's an example. We have the following. So here is one graph. A, B, C, D, E, F. And here are the edges. E1, E4, E5, E6, E7. And then we have the other graph that doesn't look just like this. Yeah, that's good. Shape ray doesn't matter. R, Q, P, M. And then uh, here are their edges E1, E4, E2, E7. So you look at the graph, the graphs, and you are asking, uh, are these graphs isomorphic? So generally, when I tell you what uh, what the mapping is, uh, oh, I didn't label one of them. I didn't label this. Then you can just check it. But it's a question: How do you actually decide if you want to do the mapping, who to map it to what? So one of the main things is that every vertex must be mapped into the vertex of the same degree. That's not enough, but that's a necessary condition. So basically I would never map A into M because A has degree 3, M has degree 2, so that really doesn't make sense. So A must, might be, uh, must, must be mapped in some of degree 3, so either into R or into P. But then, as I said, that's not enough, so you want, uh, again, uh, so then you have a look at this path here, A, E, F, C, I like that path maybe between 3 degrees. So lots of properties need to, um, uh, to follow. So here's a good trick actually to maybe uh, decide what it is. Look, if I redraw this geometrically, it might tell me which properties are protected. Again, I'm going to label one more of them. And so here it is. I can redraw this because as long as I keep connection above this line. So uh, what was that? I'll show you. Yes. So I will redraw it like above. Like this. So, so what are those? What was the name of that vertex? The name of that vertex was S. So S, I will draw and connect like this. When you, when I draw it like this, it's kind of obvious what would be the matchup because what A should be mapped with R, and then this zigzag M and P is the same as zigzag A E F C. See so one, two, three. One, two, three. There is little uh, degree two above, little degree two below. So it's quite obvious now. So what would that be? A goes into R. E goes into M. F goes into N. And C goes into P. And then D goes into S. And then B goes into Q. So here's the mapping, and then you can really check all the properties, and you will see that really whenever, so it is first known, known, known to 
and whenever, for example, uh, who's connected here, let's say, or not only connected, let's say, from A to F, there is a path of length 2. So we must have from A to F, from R to N, I must have a path of length 2, here it is R, M. So all these properties must be transferred. But that's sometimes a way to actually catch that certain graphs are not at the one. You find the property that one has, the other one does not, and that's uh, what tells you that they cannot be isomorphic. So here is one example. So what is this? Big star square, small square, and then it's connected here, even the labels are not, or yes they are, if I want to talk about it. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Then the other one has the following, it has these two, and then here are the connections. A, B, C, D, E, F, H, G. And then what? Uh, so who knows, maybe I can reshuffle it somehow and then make those things isomorphic. But generally, what, what, what is the thing that makes them for sure not isomorphic? Look at this guy. It has two cycles of length 4. Cycle of length 4. What are they? A, B, C, D. C, D, A. And then uh, uh, actually it has uh, three cycles of length 4. Cycles of length 4. It, it has what else? 4, A, H, G, F, E. And then cycle of length 4 is which one? Uh, this one, A, H, E, D. So we have three cycles of length 4. What about here? We have 2, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, five 6, 7, 8, 5 again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 again. So generally what? These are two cycles, there's no third one because wherever we go, if you go from big circle to small one, then we cannot connect the back. We have to cover uh, two edges of the smaller of the, the big one, two in and two out, so at least length 5. So this one has two cycles, and this one has three cycles of length 4. So that property tells us that they are not isomorphic. So, so these are basic ideas. So once again, uh, when you want to show that something is not isomorphic, then you find the property, describable property that one has and the other one does not. But, but if you want that they are isomorphic, you need to find what are the, would be the corresponding vertices and they usually, no, they always must be uh, of the same degree, or that's usually not enough because there are many of them, so you need to decide which one corresponds to which one.